everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zainab Muhammad. I am the community advocacy manager with the Council on American Islamic Relations here in the state of Minnesota. Um, we're a civil rights organization and we are standing here with community groups um, and faith uh, leaders from both here in Farmington and across the state of Minnesota to respond to the discrimination that the cemetery that we're here at has been under the last few years and the repeated attacks on the Muslim community here. Um, we will be, um, the, the cemetery will also be doing an offer to anybody who can help with, uh, with the response of who has done this type of crime. Um, I will be the MC for, the, for this, uh, for this uh, press conference and our first speaker is going to be the Executive Director of Care Minnesota, Jaylani Hussain. Uh, first of all, I want to just uh, greet everybody giving you a peace. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, may peace and blessings be upon you all. Um, I'm really honored uh, and want to thank uh, the incredible faith leaders that have come here today uh, to stand with the Muslim community um, in this uh, response for call uh, to actually uh, see this beautiful uh, land uh, turn into a final, final resting place for the Muslim community. The Minnesota Muslim community, uh, and particularly um, when it comes to uh, building a mosque, when it comes to, uh, in this case, building a cemetery, have faced almost at 90%, if not 99%, hostility and have faced challenges from doing the most basic, fundamental right as Americans, uh, which is to practice our faith freely. This cemetery uh, has gone through many challenges, from the initial inception of purchasing this land and aiming to turn it into a cemetery in 2014. But just like many mosques, just like many uh, uh, mosques across the state of Minnesota, the cemetery was denied the basic right to have this land be a cemetery. And we have seen land use decisions across the state and as well as across this country being used to discriminate against Muslim community. But this cemetery has not only faced clearly uh, religious discrimination at the, sit at the township level, but also have faced uh, repeated attacks. Uh, the most recent, October 5th, which I was actually the individual who came immediately after learning that there was a gas leak. Uh, and when I came, I saw clearly that someone left behind almost 30 to 40 tires and made a huge gash or cut in the gas line which made this entire area filled with gas to the point uh, a good Samaritan smelled gas driving nearly 50 miles an hour passing uh, this area uh, and came back as a good Samaritan to check to see where this gas leak was. And it was such a big gas leak that you can smell it from very far away. Uh, but that gas leak was, always, was meant to be a bomb to literally blow this building up and anyone who came near it. Um, and the reason why we think not only this was a targeted hate, but it was also targeted hate based on the most recent activity of the cemetery. In August of uh, earlier this year, uh, I myself visited the township planning meeting where we discussed specifically requesting and proposing two new conditional use permits, which would be used for uh, using the building behind me here as a place to pray for those who come here visiting their loved ones and as the prayer process because we're not allowed to pray in this uh, building according to uh, the township. Uh, so we wanted that conditional use but also a conditional use to use this building uh, as a way of processing the, the, uh, the, the, um, the bodies of those who are deceased in their preparation for the cemetery. Uh, we made sure that we informed that we would use this building and it was not only few weeks after that, uh, on October 5th, someone came to deliberately burn and, and, and explode this building behind me. We are dealing with compounded uh, discrimination and attack against this community. This cemetery will be one of the largest, in fact, the largest cemetery here in Minnesota, and it's aimed to serve the Muslim community for generations to come. And all indications show the larger the cemetery, the more likely the cemetery will be sustained, the more likely the cemetery will be in best management and care. Um, I'm here today 
uh, really to ask uh, many of our Minnesotans uh, who have shared their support and solidarity with the Muslim community and with the, uh, uh, to, to the larger extent of the minority community that the attacks that have happened here both in August as well as the attack that happened in October uh, both signify that the individuals who have been targeting us have felt that they can get away with continuing to target the cemetery. Uh, and that is why today, uh, with the leadership of the cemetery and others, we are now announcing a reward. We're also asking people to help uh, support the cemetery because the damages that have been caused are extensive. Uh, one thing specific about this damage was the person who destroyed this building knew exactly how to make the largest amount of impact and destruction. Um, as someone who has been fighting on behalf of the Muslim community, uh, every time we see these hate crimes, the one significant aspect is if they are targeting us, they are also targeting others. In fact, uh, in the buildings, both this building and that building, you can find the graffiti that is targeting our Jewish community members with swastikas, among other things. The hate has to be stopped. It has to be stopped. And we're asking for the residents of this great state to stand up just like you are here today, showing solidarity and unity over hate. So I encourage people uh, to, re to report information to the law enforcement if they can find it, but also most importantly to support the cemetery. There is a launch good or a GoFundMe campaign created. To access that, uh, you can just text five to this number, 612-200-2550. Um, uh, again, I am extremely uh, proud of this cemetery. We are going to build it. It will be here uh, and we're going to do it. But I, we hope we can do it with a lot more support than we've had in the previous efforts leading up to this uh, moment. Uh, and as I mentioned, there are still two conditional use permits that have yet to be introduced or proposed yet. And we hope that we don't have to go to court to seek simply to pray here and to process those who would be buried here uh, through a legal challenge. We are hopeful about that, uh, but we will not accept and we will not tolerate hate and violence against our community uh, even before we have laid the first person to rest here in this beautiful cemetery. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mah uh, Imam Mohammed Azman, who is the director here at the cemetery. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for coming to this gathering. Thank you for your support. My name is Muhammad Osman, M O H A M A D, last name O S M A N. Today we are gathering here with faith leaders to stand against hate. Hate that can be seen as you can see the damage to our cemetery buildings. And the hate that's a dark and larking in the halls of power that deny us of our most cherished freedom, like the freedom of religion. We invention Al Maghfirah Cemetery will be the main cemetery for the Twin Cities community, Muslim community, for the generations to come. Yet the journey to this dream has been filled with a lot of challenges. Castle Rock Township Board rejected application in August 2014 to build our cemetery here because of our faith. We had to legally challenge this land use discriminatory decision by the Castle Rock Township. In January 2016, by the court order, this property has been deemed a cemetery. Today we stand here because of that court order. Shortly after our win in the court in August 2017, the cemetery was attacked and vandalized it with the destruction of property and hateful graffiti towards our community and our friends, the Jewish community. Someone smelled gas, link, gas leak in the early morning of October 5th in this year. Members from the community found later 
more than 30 tires strategically placed inside the building and a large gas pipe, pipe was cut inside the facility, seeking an explosion and subsequent fire. The two attacks have caused a significant impact on our cemetery after estimating the damage that have been committed. It was clear that those who came understood how to generate the most severe damage by targeting key infrastructure. We complete our initial estimate. It's over 150,000 in damages. The damage includes water, electricity, essential heating, and cooling equipment, and extensive damage to the property's other basic interior and exterior parties. We need answers. Therefore, today we also announced that we are offering a reward of four or 5,000 for any information that leads to an arrest in the, two, in the two attacks against the cemetery. We also call on our Minnesota family to join us in helping rebuild and reject, it, and reject hate by supporting our lunch good camping and raising these funds. Finally, next Sunday, we ask members of the community to come and help, to come and help and, and help clean the building from the sum of the damage as we pick up the pieces and move forward. This attack was not just against us. It was an attack against all faiths and cemeteries across the state. We must condemn hate. We're not going anywhere. We are part of the fabric of this state. We will build a cemetery that is all we can be proud of. To those who thought these attacks would drive us away, see this love and unity behind me today. And know that we are part of the fabric of this city also. To the Farmington area community, we know these attacks do not reflect our community, but we cannot be silent in the face of hate. It's now the time to show our unity against hate. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Karen Murat, who is uh, the executive director with Jewish Community Action. Oops. Hi, I'm Karen Murat, C-A-R-I-N-M-R-O-T-Z. I'm the executive director of Jewish Community Action. Um, I want to first just say I'm sorry. Um, that this place, this place that's designated to be a sacred place was vandalized. Uh, and that feels familiar to me. Uh, just last month in St. Paul, a Jewish cemetery was also vandalized. More than 30 gravestones were knocked down. I wanna say cemeteries are not just a home to the deceased. They're places that we visit to honor them, to remember them and to pray. The resting places of our loved ones, our ancestors are sacred spaces religious spaces, and targeting them is not just vandalism, it's desecration. And it's not just disrespectful to the deceased, it is a message of hate and terror to the families and community members who visit these spaces and intend to visit these spaces. Cemeteries are not just for the dead, they're for the living, and the living deserve to live without fear. The Muslim community in Minnesota deserves to live without fear. So again, I'm sorry that this happened and that it keeps happening. Now I want to name that the same week that a Jewish cemetery in St. Paul was vandalized, a synagogue in St. Louis Park received a credible threat of violence and they had to evacuate and shut down and cancel religious services. These acts are related. They may not be committed by the same person, but they're committed with the same intent to keep us from practicing our faith, to scare us, to scare us away from being together in community and to make sure that we know we are not welcome. So I want the Muslim community to know that my community will always stand with you in solidarity. We're stronger together. But our communities don't just stand together in the face of attacks. We are actually working together proactively to find solutions. 
The Jewish and Muslim communities know firsthand that many Minnesotans have been targeted this way. And the fact is that often these incidents will simply never be tracked as an act of hate by law enforcement or any state agency. They will never become part of a picture of what Minnesotans are experiencing, limiting the resources and support for developing any effective responses. Now, several years ago, CARE and JCA, along with our friends at Outfront Minnesota, formed the Communities Combating Hate Coalition in order to find state-level policy solutions to respond to acts of hate. Today, we're a coalition of almost 20 organizations focused on improving the state's response to these incidents, how they're tracked, and how our communities are supported and resourced in developing solutions. We've been working to pass a bill at the state legislature that would provide training to law enforcement on how to properly respond to and track bias motivated incidents and would create a direct channel between our organizations and the State Department of Human Rights so that we can report the incidents that we know happen and the reports that we take. It is so important that communities are able to tell our own stories, to share what we know is happening and that we be involved in solutions. And while our bill, our bill found support in the State House, leadership in the Minnesota Senate refused to even give us a hearing. And when our champion state representatives put us in their public safety omnibus bill, Senate leadership stripped it back out. So in 2021, in a year when our communities, when the Asian American community is experiencing record amounts of hate, leadership in the Minnesota State Senate refused to even discuss it and actively shut down the conversation. They didn't think hate crimes were important enough even for a hearing. So we'll be back at the Capitol next year together. And if it takes all of our voices here to demand that they pay attention, then we will bring all of our voices. So I'm honored to be with you today. And my community will, will continue to stand with you in the face of hate. But also we will organize with you and advocate with you to force leaders to see this as urgent as our communities do. We will not allow them to simply look away. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Imam Mahmoud with Dawah Institute. My name is Imam Hassan Mohamud Hassan H A S S A N Mohamud M O H A M U D Imam of Islamic Dawah Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Let me first share with you, it's overdue, overdue, overdue to move in uh, this place as a Muslim community, the first owned Islamic cemetery in Minnesota. And it's overdue also when this type of act or criminal act happened, we were expecting as a Muslims that our law enforcement agencies to quickly respond, at least to give us updates what's going on. As a Muslim, we believe as a part of the fabric of America or Minnesota, we have full rights to practice as a part of American constitution, our faith. And one of the important segment of our faith is having space for those loved one lost or passed away resting place. We believe many alliance, as you saw, the friends who are here and others disagree this hate crime and we will disagree until it's gone. Many of us, when Trump left, we thought hate left, but hate still is with us. This tragedy could kill hundreds of people, but uh, God helped us to be safe. Imagine all this information that we were given if this, this explosion could happen. We ask as a community, the law enforcement, the federal level and the state level to speed up their work to find out who was behind this criminal act. Finally, we ask everyone, all Minnesotans, our alliance, peace-loving communities, faith groups, 
to continue to be together to fight to fight against the hate. Thank you. Our next speaker is Patricia Luo with St. Paul Synod. I am Bishop Patricia Lull, L-U-L-L. -L. I serve as the Bishop for the St. Paul Area Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. It saddens me, but I would not miss this opportunity to come and stand with Muslim and Jewish neighbors and other persons of goodwill to say that there is no teaching in the Christian community that leads to the hatred of other faith traditions. The strongest teachings in the Christian community teach us to be good neighbors. And as others have said this very day, to allow people to gather in mourning, to allow the living to grieve, to allow the dead to be remembered is a fundamental right in every human community, but most especially in Minnesota, the place that so many of us now call home. As a Christian leader, I call upon this greater community throughout Minnesota and this area of Dakota County to find a way to live out the practice of being good neighbors. And though uh, it uh, cost each one of us to come forward because of actions of hatred and vile disrespect, all of you can count on the fact that Christians of goodwill will continue to show up with others when they suffer. Thank you. Our next speaker is Imam Azid al zamam with Muslim American Society. Good afternoon. I am Imam Asad Zaman, A-S-A-D-Z-A-M-A-N. I'm executive director of the Muslim American Society of Minnesota. One of our three um, mosques is the nearest neighbor to this graveyard, to this cemetery. The South Metro Islamic Center is 13 minutes from here in Rosemount. And we found the Rosemount community to be welcoming, except for two Islamophobes who made a lot of noise back when we started moving in. And I suspect the same is true here. I suspect that the people of Farmington and Castle Rock Township are supportive and welcoming. I suspect the actions of the city council or the township council in repeatedly attempting to thwart the proper use of this cemetery is not representative of their community. But it's time. Within a matter of days, a, a set of conditional use permits will be applied for. I urge the city council to approve them without delay, immediately. I question why the mayor is not here. That's your job, man. Kissing babies and showing up when there are calamities, that's your job. Why aren't you here? You need to be here. That's your job. I joined the Al Maghfira Cemetery uh, Board my organization, the Muslim American Society, will double this reward. We call on the community to give information to law enforcement, leading to the arrest of the persons involved. We call on the local community to help support this cemetery get off the ground. Thank you very much. Awesome. Our next speaker is Karen Evenson with uh, Faith Church United Methodist here in Farmington. As I heard the story of a good Samaritan today being told, someone who helped 
uh, this tragedy to at least be thwarted for the for this place I was reminded of the story of the Good Samaritan in the Bible as a core of our Christian faith as followers of Christ and the ways of Jesus we are called to learn from that story Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan as an opportunity for people to respond to come out to be part of solutions rather than part of problems to be part of love rather than part of hate as a Christian minister and as a United Methodist pastor I follow Wesleyan principles the founder of the United Methodist Church or the Methodist Church John Wesley reminds us or reminded us of the principles of doing good, paying with and for others, paying attention to all of the parts of what have become our religious practices, including burying, loving, blessing, and remembering our loved ones, and including a gathering for religious assembly. Today is an opportunity, no matter what faith you practice or don't practice. It's an opportunity to respond and to be part of solutions rather than problems. It's an opportunity to stop by the side of the road and get to know someone and help someone that you may not be familiar with or know. So today can be a new day an opportunity to move forward, to do better, and to get to know one another. In this community that I serve, living in the area of Rosemount and Farmington and Castle Rock, I know that there are many people here who love their neighbors, who want to step up and to step out and to be supportive and to be welcoming. And so that is what I call upon us all to do together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ma'am, we just get to spelling of your name before you leave, please. Absolutely. I'm Karen Evenson, K-A-R-E-N-E-V-E-N-S-O-N, and I'm pastor at Faith Church United Methodist. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Imam Yusuf with Ayana. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. My name is Yusuf Abdullah. Uh, Yusuf Y U S U F Abdullah A B D U L L E. I am the executive director of Islamic Association of North America Ayana. I am here today uh, to support the community of Minnesota and specifically the community of my faith, the Muslims, who are facing such an act of an animosity and hate and shown in different ways and kinds. And it is really very sad to ask in the 21st century in the state of Minnesota to have a place to bury your deceased and pray for them in peace. This is really very sad. It is nothing else. We're not asking. This is a human human rights issue. Very basic human rights. As the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and was sitting and they you know, and it, a deceased person was being carried to the graveyards. The caravan was passing by and he stood up and they told him he's not a Muslim. And he said, isn't that a human soul, a human being carried? He stood for that. So today we're standing for that as well, for everyone who cares about principle and dignity, honor, integrity, unity, and understanding. This is the day that we need 
to take all of us, to take action all of us. And this action should not be a lip service. It should be concrete. It should be effective. It should be done together. The law enforcement agencies should not take this matter lightly. The community in this area should not take this matter lightly as well. Because what if one of us or a group of us is attacked, it's like we are all attacked. Anyone who thinks hate differentiates is really thinking wrong. If it's the turn of the Muslims, it will be the turn of you tomorrow. It will be your turn. So I call the community of Minnesota to come together to support one of their organs, very important organs, the Muslim community, to have it is full right of being able to bury their deceased loved ones, to pray for them, to visit them, to bury them peacefully and with no interruptions. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Pastor Doug. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Mork, uh, D-O-U-G-M-O-R-K. Uh, I am one of the pastors at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis, uh, and also the director of the Building Dignity and Respect Standards Council and a board member of the Twin Cities Social Cohesion Initiative. I grew up in rural Minnesota. My, my home family church is probably 30 or so miles from here in Kenyon. We learned in our congregations, like many across communities of faith, that caring for neighbor was important. We learned Bible stories about being kind to neighbor and watching out for one another. And I think, sadly, we didn't always connect the dots. We didn't kind of make the jump of, of really the world in which we lived and what the neighbor looked like and what it might mean to not just to sort of practice these in words, but how it might impact living. Um, as a member of the Christian community in Minnesota, I think we bear a special responsibility as the majority community here is a community for, that for the most part um, has been far from some of the persecutions of recent years, particularly of the Jewish community, of our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community and in the Muslim community. And we bear, I think, a special responsibility um, to really connect the dots, to really think about what does it mean to practice our faith in a world that's beautifully, vibrantly diverse, in neighborhoods that are changing and communities um, that are um, coming back to life, communities that in some cases, like the towns I grew up in, were, were declining as, as the world changed around us and agriculture and other ways, uh, and now are coming back with an influx of new community and new peoples. Um, we're really called to connect those dots. We're called to intentional practice. Um, social cohesion, connection to neighbor, uh, doesn't, I think, happen accidentally. It really does take practice. Um, and I think, again, as, um, as, as, as a community together, we are here to stand with our Muslim brothers and sisters, um, long partners in many parts of this work, um, both in the Twin Cities and around the state. Um, we will stand with you. Um, we will be here as, as there is need. And we will do a better job of connecting the dots in our communities and our organizations of what uh, living the gospel for us looks like in the world with our beloved neighbors. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speakers are Muhammad Yusuf and Salad Abdi, who are community elders in our community. Thank you guys. My name Muhammad Yusuf M O H A M E D Yusuf Y U S U F. Um, 
little bit I'm sad. My topic I want to speak today, already somebody pick up. Then I build the other one and somebody pick up. And so now I don't know what I say, <laughs> but I have to build the new <laughs> because all good somebody say already. But my point is, we come here, I'm come here representing the Carmel Mall and Carmel elders and business owners. So what do we need here today to stand in front of you? The cemetery, the first of all, it's not business. It's not like a political. It's dignity of the human being. When you rest in the place, you rest. It shouldn't be like this or any problem or anything uh, with the mayor or any political or going in the paper not to accept. It shouldn't be. Every community has a cemetery. Jewish community has a cemetery. Christian community has a cemetery. Chinese, uh, Hmong people, they have. So we are the similar, we are the same. It should be placing place. And somebody want to burn here, I think he doesn't have a heart. He, that person, he lives without heart. If he has a heart and he know tomorrow he will die or has a family, mother and father and cousin, nobody do like this kind of job. So uh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much, guys. You are supporters. I hear my ears. Good news. So I'm full now to keep to back my my place. Thank you so much again. You are supported. You're more than welcome. We hope we will solve this problem quickly, so easy. Thank you. I will be translating. Okay. Um, my name is Salat S A L D. Uh, His name is Salat S A L D D. Markan wa Marki Labad on Mashan Kahala yo. This is the second time I'm speaking in front about this cemetery. I'm extremely disappointed with the United States government as well as the, uh, the government of the state of Minnesota that has yet to honor us uh, to allowing the cemetery to move forward. The Minnesota Muslim community are a, a vibrant a fabric of the community. They're business owners. They contribute to the economy of the state, and they should have a final resting place, their own cemetery. And I will fight to speak, especially to our elected officials, to make sure that they have a role in finding a solution to this issue. Thank you. And then I think we have our last speaker. Our final speaker is Sadiq Warsame, who is a student at Da'wa Academy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings and mercy of Allah be upon you all. And today, uh, well, I'm an eighth grader, part of the school and mosque of Dawa Academy. And I'm here today to tell you guys how upsetting and how revolting, how disgusting it is, how these people try to destroy a place of resting, a sacred area where people mourn and pray for others. And yet, the, f the saddest part is they, they went to an area, it's not political, as, they, as has been stated, it's not political, it's not anywhere a place of controversy, it's a place of peace, and a place of resting. And yes, it's very disappointing that nobody will stick up with us. Our, just because we are Muslims does not mean we lose the right of having an area at first, we struggled to have this area and to let us be in peace. No, we do not allow that and we will stick up to each other, with each other. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy, yes, of our people of Minnesota, our residents of Minnesota, they are helping us and I'm very happy about that, I'm proud about that. And 
all of us together, we will all work together to find the person who did such a revolting act. And we will make sure that person has been bring to, ju to justice. We need justice. We are Muslims, not just us, but every other community deserves their rights, such as the Christians and the, the Jews. We all deserve a place of peace. And I want to tell you all that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that yes, Allah knows what the wrongdoer has done, yet he gives them a time to respite. But one day, they will see, we will all see the horror in their eyes. So please, we must all work together. I don't want to keep saying the same thing all over and over again. It's been stated already. But we must all work together and be sincere about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We saved the best for the last. Um, yeah. Thank you, Saqid. Uh, uh, is there any any of the other imams who wanted to say a few words? I don't want to close the mic. Uh, otherwise, we'll open up for Q questions if you have any questions. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 come on. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. Very My name is uh, Imam Muhammad Mukhtar, uh, one of the imams of uh, Darul Farooq Islamic Center. Uh, I'm very proud of you. I thank you, all of you, the media, uh, and the uh, imams, and the pastors of the churches. Uh, thank you so much and all the community who came here. Uh, we are very sad and uh, to see and uh, what happening to the Muslim community here and and it's not supposed to happen that. Uh, but we are uh, we would like to thank you for your support and and we would like to say to the uh, uh, government, the Minnesota, uh, we need your help. Uh, and we would like to also get release this place for the burying and Muslim uh, and bodies, and and also to use uh, uh, this building for the prayer. When we are burying someone, <coughs> there are procedure. We pray on that person and and wash the body. And the, and the people also they need in this this place, as you know, the Minnesota is very cold place. There is snow. We can't stay outside when we are going to bury anyone here. So we would like uh, to say to the government and to the city here, please, we need your help, and also we need <coughs> accountability for those who are making destruction for the community. Thank you so much, and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. I think if anyone has questions, then we can close up. Yes. Um, just talk about moving forward with the next process. And also, when is this officially supposed to open? But where's the red tape at right now? Maybe you can explain a little bit of. Yeah. So. Yeah. If they might, uh, so mainly the 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 the, the first. Yeah. The first. We have a question. The first hurdle is uh, has been really. Uh, the amount of damage that has been caused to this building. Uh, but right now, what we shared with the township in August meeting was that we wanted to get the uh, conditional uses for this building behind me, which we will give you access to the media to, to walk in and, and take some of the images of the damages, uh, to use this building for uh, the washing of the body, repairing the body, as well as also as a place for prayer where people can pray uh, on the deceased, but also pray here. And those two uses are not part of the initial conditional use permit that was legally uh, fought and illegally won, which allows this land to be used as cemetery. So until those issues are resolved, it is difficult for us just to bury someone here without having those tandems. And so we're looking forward in this month um, to propose those uh, conditional use permits. But obviously, uh, this attack has caused a great deal of uh, impact and damage. Um, so the question is like next steps. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Two points quickly of clarification, yeah. John. Yeah. Was, there, was there one or two 
incidents of vandalism here, and it was, is it my understanding that no law enforcement, you have been in not contact with any law enforcement, local, state, or, or federal over these events? No, uh, so you're right. There are two incidents uh, in August of 2017, which frankly is also the same time the mosque was bombed in Bloomington. But uh, yes, the, uh, the, the law enforcement were reported to at that incident, including the local sheriff as well as the FBI. And in the second incident, we are working with the sheriff. I did have a conversation with them as well uh, about this press conference today. Um, and also the FBI, we've alerted the FBI on, on this incident. And that is why I think the award now is at 10,000. And I said this correctly. So yeah, 5,000. So it'll be the award now is $10,000 uh, for any information that leads to an arrest. Uh, and we think somebody knows because the information about the use of this building was only shared at that public meeting. But a lot of there's nobody attending that public meeting. There's not many people. It's like a handful of folks. So it was the report of that public finding that was shared out to the neighborhood. Uh, so it's someone who knows the cemetery. It's someone who's nearby is what are uh, what we're suspecting. As far as the damages, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, according to the contractors who look at the facility, the person who was causing the damage knew the the cost of what the damage would be if they damaged this versus that. So they went for the high product, high, most valuable uh, items in the building. And so, uh, uh, but yes, yes. Um, excuse me, Jay Lani. Mm -hmm. um, was this building, um, has it ever been damaged before? Or how long has it, has it been sitting vacancy before someone came and damaged it? So the building since 2014 hasn't been used for daily activities because the cemetery was not approved. We had to fight legally just to declare this land cemetery. Uh, but the building has been monitored. Uh, there was electricity and gas and everything that were included in it. Um, and uh, we knew that obviously we, we have the incidents from the, the two incidents that have happened. We have actually documentation of every incident that happened, including this last one. All right, thank you. So we will Thanks open the building. For those who want to go in, you can go right through uh, the back here. Uh, the extent of the damage is uh, with the tires you will see in the, um, the, the main area there. Uh, and then as you walk into the building, there are damages to the walls and to all the major appliances that, that the building has. And to all of our community, thank you so much. You can stick around, hang out for a little bit. We don't have to rush out. So thank you again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.